In this video, I'm going to show how you can have this gallery on your app. This gallery looks like a table. It has action buttons, has a header in the top and a footer in the bottom that counts the number of rows and sums a column. Also, this gallery, it's a little bit flexible. If it's in a space that's smaller than the whole page, it will adapt. The headers will adapt and the texts will also adapt to the width of the whole control. And you can have this in your app with just a couple of clicks and then adapt to your data source. This is what you're going to see now. But first, let's understand what's the structure of this. If we look at the tree view, we can see that we have a vertical container. And inside this container, we have three components. Another container, that's the header. This is a horizontal container that has the texts inside it, that are the labels. Then we have the gallery that has all the controls inside it. Text, image, another text, another text, another text. A badge to show the status and two buttons with icons that are inside another container. So they are side by side in a nice way. After this gallery, we have the footer that's another horizontal container with two labels, two texts that count the number of rows and do the sum of one of the columns. So the formulas are in here. And the good thing is that you can have this with a couple of clicks and then adapt. I'm going to delete this whole container. I'm not going to teach how to do it from scratch because we are going to reuse code. This is the idea of this video. Let's delete this. And now I have a blank screen. I'm going to go to the site that I'm going to show here, Power Apps Tools. Is the website I created with my colleague Liu, where we can share codes here, code snippets, YAML snippets. That's the language that Power Apps interprets to show controls in the screen. I'm going to search here for this gallery that I called responsive gallery with headers and totals. And I'm going to click on copy YAML. Notice that the language of my app is in English because we have that difference between the separators being a comma or a semicolon. In my case, it's a comma. Now that I clicked on copy, I'm going to go back to my Power Apps in my screen, right click on it and select paste and paste code. This is a preview feature, but it's going to paste the code that represents all those controls and it's going to insert directly inside my app. Now we have this very same gallery here with the headers and the filter. If we click in the gallery, we can see that the items properties has a static table. It's just static data here in order to render and show the capabilities of this gallery. But I can now replace with data from my data source. Here in my app, I already inserted this SharePoint list called project tasks. If I go to the list, we can see that we have these fields in here. Description, task date, work hours, approval, status, task category, priority. These three are choices and then comments. And I want to integrate these lists into that gallery. So what I need to do is select in the gallery. Instead of having this table, I just put my data source. That in this case is my SharePoint lists. Once I add my lists, it will apply the, to the gallery. And if I look back, of course, we can see that some fields are not correctly matched because they have different column names. But now I just need to go in the controls of the gallery and fix the things that are wrong. For example, here, the first item, that's the description. I can find the text and see what's wrong. I don't have the description column. I have a column called its actual description, but I need to re-add. So let's, instead of this item, I'm going to delete this part that's wrong, put a dot again on this item and find the column that I want to show that's called description and is concatenated with the comments column. Let's say I just want to show the description, then I just delete the part that's remaining. 
Here for the created by, let's click in this text. It's showing the work worked hours. It mapped wrongly. So I just I'm just going to replace by dots created by. That's the column that represents who created dot display name. This is the name of the person who created the item in SharePoint. Now task date, it mapped correctly because it had the same column name. In your case, if it's a different name, you can just change. Worked hours, we just put this item dot, and in my case, it's called worked hours. The status already mapped correct correctly. It got from the approval status and dot value because of the choice. And here you have the two buttons that you can adapt to your necessities. If you want to change the titles, you can also go to the text and change the titles. Let's say it's, a, it's not something regarding tasks, but regarding activities. That's almost the same thing, but let's say I can rename here to activity date, for example. Here, worked hours, I could put, for example, if it's regarding money, let's say something like this. You can adapt to your situation. What matters here is that in the end, you will still have the same structure with the headers, the gallery, and the footer. Now I'm going to leave you with a recommended video so you can keep learning Power Apps. See you in there.